Hello, today we are starting Matthew chapter 3 and the beginning of our Lord's earthly ministry. Several years ago, I started a Matthew Bible study video series for my church, but I didn't get very far through it. I just didn't quite have the traction at that point, but I did have some video from that. So what I'm going to be sharing with you today is some of that archival video, I guess I'd call it, from that earlier Matthew Bible study. So we're starting Matthew chapter 3 today with verses 1 to 3. In those days, John the baptizer came, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he who was spoken of by Isaiah the prophet, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Make the way of the Lord ready, make his path straight. Matthew chapter 3 doesn't begin with Jesus, it begins with John the Baptist and his call for people to repent, for the kingdom of heaven draws near. Now, this word repent is very important, and it means a lot more than just feeling sorry for our sins. The Greek word is metania. Meta means to change, and the word nia comes from the word nous, N-O-U-S. And this is the capacity within the human being to perceive the spiritual world. So the idea of metania is that we would have this change, this interchange within us, away from seeking spiritual nourishment and comfort in the physical things, in false gods, and towards the true and living God. This is metania, that we seek out sustenance and comfort and guidance, not in the false gods of a fallen world, but in the true and living God of heaven. And this gives me the opportunity to share with you my favorite little bit of ancient Greek grammar. And it's a verb tense called the aorist tense. That word really means without time. So the idea is that when a verb is in the aorist tense, it's not given any specific time duration. It's open-ended. Anytime you hear somebody say repent in the New Testament, it is presented in the aorist tense, which is to say that to repent is not just a thing we do once in our life, one and done, but repentance is something that we enter into and we continually unfold throughout our lives every day. We have to engage in this turning away from sin and turning our minds, turning our noose, turning our attention, our spiritual attention to the grace and mercy and truth and love of God. Next, we'll look at Matthew chapter 3, verse 4, in which we have a description of John the Baptist. Now John himself wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. His food was locusts and wild honey. Verse 4 has a very important connection to the Old Testament. This is about what John wore and what he ate. This relates to 2 Kings chapter 1. So we read there that Ahaziah's messenger said to him, A man came up to meet us and said to us, Go return to the king who sent you and say to him, Thus says the Lord, It is because there is no God in Israel that you are sending to inquire about Beelzebub, the god of Ekron. Therefore, you shall not come down from the bed to which you have gone up, but you shall surely die. Then they said to him, What kind of man was it who came to meet you and told you these words? So they answered, A hairy man wearing a leather belt around his waist. And he said, It is Elijah the Tishabite. So you see, St. John the Baptist is described as being dressed just like Elijah. And that's important because we know that in the prophecies, Elijah is supposed to come before the Messiah comes. So this is one of these ways that it points to this, this understanding that St. John the Baptist fulfills the ministry of Elijah at the coming of Christ, at the coming of the Messiah. Finally today, verses 5 and 6. Then people from Jerusalem and all of Judea and all the region around the Jordan went out to him. They were baptized by him in the Jordan, confessing their sins. Moving on to verses 5 and 6, we have John's baptism. Now, in his commentary on the Gospel of Matthew, Father Lawrence Farley tells us this. This baptism was very controversial. It was based almost certainly on the practice of Jewish proselyte baptism, so receiving converts into Judaism. By making baptism the sign of repentance, John was insisting that his hearers needed the same spiritual cleansing as did the Gentiles. This did not sit well with the religious establishment. The implication there is, look, we are Israel. This isn't for us. This is for the Gentiles. Why are you equating us with them? Thanks for joining me today. Next time, we will continue learning about the ministry of John the Baptist 
and its relationship with the ministry of Christ as the Messiah. Take care, and God bless. Thanks for listening to this episode of my podcast. If you'd like to learn more about Eastern Orthodox Christianity, but aren't near an Orthodox church, you might be interested in the Fellowship of St. Theophon the Recluse, an online community for seekers and inquirers all in that same situation. We have members in the U.S., Latin America, the British Isles, Africa, and Australia. For more information, message me or send me an email. Until next time, take care and God bless.